These days, it's not a letter, but it's a knock at the door. A next of kin notification officer announces the death, explains what happened, offers the country's condolences. And then a survival assistance officer attempts to explain what the country will do to assist you and your family as you step into a radically changed life. As a military wife, I sat with friends who had that very unwelcome knock at the door. And I remember so often thinking, but if we're truly going to honor the sacrifice that's been made, there's so much more that needs to be said, understood. When we speak of those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, a sacrifice on our behalf, we want to be careful to give the full honor that is due. Jesus said, greater love hath no man than to lay down his life for his friends. No greater sacrifice has ever been made than the one he died to give. But sometimes when we speak of him to others, there's so much more that needs to be said if we are going to give full honor to all that he has done for us. Would you agree? To illustrate, I've written a condolence letter explaining Jesus' death in very human terms. Now, be gracious. Remember that this is an illustration. Listen for what it says, but listen, too, for what it doesn't say. Dear God, we're grieved to inform you of the death of your son, Jesus. We want you to know that though he had done nothing to demand such a death, Jesus was crucified on a Roman cross. His last breath was a prayer that you might forgive. Jesus was a great man. Though we don't understand all that happened, it seemed as if he knew he would die. He said to those who followed him, greater love hath no man than to lay down his life for his friends. He truly loved. And we cling to the thought that his death was not in vain, but for purposes far greater than we can imagine. You have every right to be proud of him. His life and example changed ours. And we will never forget the things that we learned from him. He will live on in our memory forever. Sincerely yours, a grateful people. What's there? A very human perspective, a very incomplete story. His death, the means of death that he seemed to expect it, a tiny bit of what we should remember, <laughs> what's not there. Well, what's not there is what happened from a divine perspective. Why his death was absolutely necessary so that we might have life and so much more. His death, his resurrection, this is the gospel. The good news, and, and it is good news. And if we are going to honor well the sacrifice that he made, then we need to be able to tell a far more complete story about what his death accomplished, would you agree? That's what I want to offer us today, a means of remembering what Jesus' death did for us. 
Now this response is written humanly. So it's written as a response that God might write to us um, as a result of that very incomplete notification letter. And it's written in sections like those Memorial Day letters that you heard a moment ago on the video. The breaking of the news, for example. The cause of death, the impact of his life on others, and the long-term effect of death. So that you can, in turn, tell a far more complete story. There's a sheet in your bulletin. I'd like to invite you to take that out, if you would, and take some notes. Now, I'm not going to give you specific scripture references, but there are references noted there so that you can go back and you can look those up and reflect on them. There are pencils in your pews if you need something to write with. Fill in first what you've already heard. The breaking of the news, Jesus died to death. He did not deserve. He died it on a Roman cross. And he died asking God to forgive even as he breathed his last. What might have been God's response to the breaking of that news? Well, dear Donnie, dear Vicki, dear Betty, Cammie, dear Nina, thank you for writing some of the details of my son's death. As you perceived, he did not die senselessly, nor in vain. While some of his last words were of forgiveness, they pointed to the truth of all that he came to accomplish. His very last words, ones that I hope will help you comprehend, were, it is finished. Finished. You see, his life had a distinct mission and a far greater purpose than you can imagine. And he fulfilled that purpose perfectly, yes, at the cost of his life. As you surmised, that was his expectation, for he came to die. The cause of death. The cause of his death wasn't crucifixion, but love. Love for you. I sent him for you. You see, there is a law upon which the earth was founded. You inadvertently express it every time you cry out, that's not fair. You instinctively recognize that there is a right and a wrong and you expect that justice will one day make all things right, but justice demands that a penalty be paid. And each of you are guilty, for everyone has sinned and failed to keep that law. That guilt will not only keep you separated from me, a holy God, but the penalty is death. The impact of his life on others. My son is the only one who has ever lived that law perfectly, fulfilling every aspect of it. By his death, he brought fulfillment to it, paying the penalty that you deserve, dying as a perfect once and for all sacrifice in your place. That was his choice. The willingness to lay down his life for yours and the reason for which he came. Do you understand how great the cost he paid? Willingly leaving the perfection of heaven, the glory and the splendor that was his to come here and to die a horrible, death. 
That day on the cross, the nails piercing his hands and feet, his blood ebbing from his body, that blood covered over every sin ever committed. From the very first, trying to redefine right and wrong to that thought you had a moment ago. Every single penalty was paid. Justice was served once and for all. The only requirement to believe that he did this for you. Lastly, there was an expression of the respect due and the hoped for effect of death. His death means three things for anyone who believes. One, for those who would receive this gift paid for by my son, full pardon, full pardon is given. No guilt remains. You are no longer guilty in my sight. Two, Everything that separated us, guilt, sin, those are gone. They no longer form an impossible chasm between us. They have been completely, thoroughly atoned for, covered over as if they never, ever existed. That means because of my son's death, there is peace between us. A peace that can be in your soul and a peace that one day will characterize the whole earth. That means you can come freely into my presence with confidence without fear. Do you know how much I have longed for that? My son made that possible. Three, it means that death no longer has a hold on you. Freed from its penalty, you will live forever with me, sharing unhindered relationship, the riches of heaven, everything that I have longed to give you. When my son said, it is finished, all those things and more, thank you, were accomplished. His death changed everything about your forever. His resurrection was proof that all of those things are true. That leaves one final question. And it is a question that only you can answer. What will be the long-term effect of his sacrifice, his life given for yours? His death and life will indeed hasten the day when ruthless aggression will disappear from the face of the earth. He will reign finally and completely. And only then will there be peace on earth. But in the meantime, how will you honor this one who has made the ultimate sacrifice that you might live in true freedom with an eternal hope and a certain future? See, that's your part of the story to tell. It will be told by the way you live and in in the way that you share it with others to the end that this truly ultimate sacrifice won't be in vain.